guys. I wasn't planning on doing this live. I don't even know if it's working. Um, but I was playing around with my YouTube. And um, I accidentally released a ton of videos that I probably shouldn't have. And I was kind of going through it. I got all these comments on it. So I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to do a live. Because why not? Why not? Just going to do a live. So nobody's really here. That's okay. Um, I want to do this video. Maybe it's for me. Maybe it's for anyone that comes up in the chat, ask questions. Um, but I wasn't going to do any more videos. Not, I, I don't really enjoy this. I wasn't going to do any more, but I felt inspired this morning. I started working myself up. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do one. So first things first. Um, going back to work full time. Did I go back to work full time? Briefly. Uh, but that was in part strategic. I required a dental plan for both my kids. I am now carrying that dental plan myself, but I couldn't get it and I couldn't get it at a good rate unless I'd gone back to work. Um, the secondary issue is I needed a letter of employment. I needed a letter of employment. So uh, I got my letter of employment. And the reason is in Canada, you're required to have uh, a letter of employment. In many cases, if you run a sole proprietorship in order to get a vehicle lease, and I want to lease a vehicle because my vehicles are garbage. <laughs> so uh, that was required as well. So I am back to the full-time grind. Um, I was three weeks full-time. A week of that was spent training and I'm back to the full-time grind. But I really want and I got to tell you, I want to get this off my chest. As soon as I left, even just for a teeny bit, as soon as I left, uh, I got a lot of support from a lot of people. And I really appreciate that. But a lot of the sketchies kind of came out of the woodwork and they had a lot to say and blah, 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 blah. I'm not even going to address it. I wish them all the best. I'm not even going to address it. But that's out there too. I wanted to hit some re reselling truths. I feel like you all can trust me to a certain degree. Uh, I'm not here selling anything. Uh, I'm not here. Like I don't, don't even really care about my YouTube channel. You can't even, you can't fake that. Like I'm here. I'm not, you know, things get really, really good. I, I don't like all the negativity and stuff or I get overwhelmed and I leave. So what I'm throwing out there is 100% truth as I know it. Unfiltered. And I'll probably forget it all, but we're going to do it anyway, but it's real. You see a lot of people leaving full time. Uh, you see a lot of people struggling. Anyone who's thinking right now of selling full time, reselling full time, please know this. You are going into a market that is like selling sand in the desert. The, the reselling market is very flooded. And at the same time, your customer is stretched and strapped. I don't care what anybody else's opinion is on that because I know this to be true. Interest rates went up, inflation went up. It puts our customers in a vice. Uh, the platform has gone through changes. And at the same time, people require more money. So more people were coming onto this platform selling uh, the goodwills and whatever else caught on. So things got more expensive. Everything got more difficult. So if you want to do this full time, you're coming into a market that is very saturated, let's say, even still to this point, and it's going to take a while to heal. And the way that's going to heal, I believe, is that interest rates have to come down and our consumer has to come back. And once the consumer comes back and once things get trucking again, and they always do, uh, it, it will pick up a lot more. Now, I would advise this to anyone watching. And if anybody has any questions, pop them in the chat. I'm not expecting a lot of people to be here. There are many, many gurus, people who sell courses, people who give advice for money, on the Facebook groups, the YouTube groups, and whatever else. Patreon, all this other stuff. Um, there is a tendency, and I don't blame those 
that's a business model in itself. Let me get this straight. Like, let me put this out here. The people that are doing that are not necessarily bad people. I'm not saying that. I'm not throwing shade at that business because that is a business in itself. But if you're new coming into selling, you have a tendency to be, to go in a little bit naive maybe, and you don't see the bad. So you'll see people saying, hey, I did it. I did this. I did that. It's easy. You just got to do this. You just got to do that. And you say, yeah, this person's relatable. This is a relatable person. I can do it too. And you don't see the dark side, which is there, which is there for any business. I don't care if it's a landscaping business. It's a YouTube business. It's a reselling business. There, you're going to run into your ups and downs. Every business has that. And I, I caution you that if you're watching someone or learning from someone who never has any downs, it's always ups, they're lying because that's not real life. That person is a liar. So be cautious. Go in knowing that. Um, because that's business is a lot of problem solving and ups and downs. And if you, if you um, decide not to showcase those problems, that's fine. But you're not being genuine. And the genuine side of this is it's difficult. It's very hard. Um, sales can just drop off for no reason. I'll have a $1,700 day followed by a $100 day, followed by a $500 day, followed by a $40 day. Why? I've spent over a year deeply dedicated trying to figure out algorithms and everything else and why, and it's just as much voodoo magic now as it ever was. I don't know why. I don't know why. But it's very inconsistent. It can be very inconsistent. And the competition is very high. It's very, very high. So, you know, typically when you want to start a business, I'm rambling. I know. I know I'm rambling. Hello, everyone, by the way. I'm going to say hi to everybody. I know I'm rambling. But um, typically for a business to be very successful, the way you kind of got to do it is you got to find a problem or create a problem even. Uh, create the solution and then market that solution. But the problem right now in reselling is there's too many people. And um, the thrift stores know it. The prices are higher. Uh, it's just, it's flooded. It's very flooded. So that's out there. If you want to start on your own, doesn't mean you, you can't do it. Second, and this is not me tooting my own horn, but if you want to do this, it, people don't go over the numbers either. People don't go over the numbers. I'm a six-figure reseller doesn't mean anything that could mean you're you know living below the poverty line I, can, I man I got so much to say I got because I, I haven't talked in a while I'm all over the place I know but uh let's let's start there let's go there the numbers let's talk about numbers hi I'm a six-figure reseller wow you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year it's easy all you got to do is find this and find that you make a hundred thousand dollars a year Nonsense. You do not make $100,000 a year. You can gross it. But take away your cost of goods. The cost of goods are the items that don't sell. Cell phone, rent, uh, storage space, rental, um, eBay fees, cost of shipping, cost of packaging, etc., etc., etc. And all of a sudden, your $100,000 is whittled down to $30,000. And from that 30000 you have to reinvest in inventory. That's realistic. There will be people on here that say, I sell $100,000 worth of stuff and I make eighty. Nonsense. It's not true. That's not how it works. So, and I think I realized this early on. And for the first three years, I reinvested absolutely everything I had. Everything I made got reinvested into the business. And um, I understand that to a certain degree, I have privilege that I can do that. But that's what I did. And the business on its own, it was still a struggle. It was a huge struggle. I said, I have 17,500 items up right now. Yesterday, I sold three items. It's just that like that. The day before that, I had a great day. Or maybe it was the day before that. It's just like that, and um, it can drive you mad. <laughs> it 
can drive you insane, but people don't, don't really talk about that. And I, I would say if you want to follow people, there are a lot of people here that put out great advice and sometimes you have to pay for it and there's nothing wrong with that. Again, I'm not throwing shade at that, but keep it in the back of your head is this person selling me something? Because if they are, then you are a customer of that business as well. There's nothing wrong with that. If someone's putting out good advice, maybe you should pay for it, but keep that in your mind. I will say sourcing too is very hard right now. I don't mean this to be all negative, but I, I think it's important so uh, you don't get disillusioned. Sourcing is hard. Thrift stores are hard because the thrift stores have caught on for the most part. Storage lockers are hard. People watch storage wars and they watch videos on here and they are very expensive. I know that because I've done over a hundred storage lockers. I can't buy them. I can't get them right now. It's very hard. So now you're looking at estate sales, private deals, and the occasional garage sale. But even garage sales, they're, they're pricing their stuff largely on ebay prices they just don't want to do all the ebay rigmarole it's hard right now it's difficult and it's difficult specifically for the people who are trying to build businesses if you're not trying to build a business please ignore everything i have to say if you're doing this part-time or whatever i'm not talking to you i'm talking to the people who are disillusioned in their jobs who want to build something because ebay is an excellent opportunity to build a business but it takes time it takes time uh, and dedication and a lot of hard work, especially now. Those are the people I'm talking to. People who have dreams and goals of building a business because they want out of the rat race. It's possible. It's very difficult. You're competing with people like James, who's listing 150 a day. I list 50 a day. Uh, Daniel May lists 50 a day. Um, Calamity Photo lists 50 a day. Uh, competing with people like that. That's the environment you're moving into. And there are probably people listing hundreds, maybe even thousands a day, automating everything. It, that's the, just the, the way it is right now. So you kind of got to find your area. I'm going to jump into the chat. I don't know how long this is going to go. I was so fired up. I was like, I am, I'm watching these videos and people are like, it's all you got to do is this and all you got to do that. It's simple. It's this and that, or people message saying, no, you should follow this person. I know who that person is. People typing me, you should follow this person. They know so much. I know who that person is. I know who that person is already. What they're showing you and what is real life is not, is not the same. We don't do this so that you can live in your parents' trailer and barely s scrape by and then put up a phony thing online. You don't do this so that you can just barely scrape by. People do this because they wanna build something. They see others building businesses and a lot of people wanna build a business. And the people that I talk to who are really doing this, who are really doing this, no pretend fake stuff, but are really, really doing this, they don't have YouTube channels, it's been a very hard three years for them or very hard two years. Very difficult for many different reasons. Downsizing, layoffs, and everything else. It's been hard. It's been hard. But it will get better, in my opinion. So I have now just focused this year, after redoing my inventory of just listing my 50 a day, and for the rest, I've got to do a better job of tuning out the noise. Um, that's what I have to do. My own self. And the problem I have with my YouTube channel, this is like, this is like coffee amongst friends right now, I guess. Because there are about a thousand people on here who I feel like I know their, their names and I know them enough from their comments. And... If that, that would be perfect. If this was this channel would, could box the thousand of us in and we could all just sit and talk and just talk about business and what's going on, that would be perfect and just lock all the other ones out. But it's, that's not real life. Uh, so this is, I guess, just kind of like 
I don't know, a little bit of a coffee talk, but I was so, I was pumped. I was like, ugh, I was getting all these messages. I was like, oh man, pumped. So I don't know how long it's going to be. I don't know how long I'm going to do this, but if you have any questions about what's been happening with me in the last little while, I will answer them as honest as possible. Um, I will say this about eBay. It is still one of the greatest opportunities out there to build a business because it will teach you a few things. It will teach you customer service. It will teach you to find things that customers actually want, market it to them, and then provide them with that item uh, more or less seamlessly. Because if you don't, you'll get punished. Um, eBay teaches you the basics of accounting, the basics of um, what's profitable and what isn't. It really teaches you everything about business, the basics. Um, so I think eBay is a great platform. Now, eBay's gone through a lot of changes over the past couple of years. From a 30,000 foot view, I understand they had to. The pace of technology has changed very rapidly with AI, speeds, processors, a lot of this stuff I don't understand admittedly, but it's changed extremely quickly. Um, and the speed of that eBay is right in the heart. They're on Hamilton Street in San Jose. They're right in the heart of that. So they've had to change and upgrade the platform very quickly, upgrade servers and whatever else they're up to. They're making a ton of changes. We don't change that fast. We can't change as fast as what they are. Um, but that being said, they'll finish their changes. Things will get better again. This has happened before. It happened to Amazon and things will get better. Things will get better. Businesses will grow again. Uh, you will hear people again saying how much they make in their corporate job and all the perks and benefits and the this and that and people will start chasing after that and we will flourish but it takes time. I love eBay. And I honestly mean that eBay, I buy on eBay, I sell on eBay. The reason I love it is that you can find almost anything. Cool, very interesting things. I love, I love antiques and antiques. I would never find anywhere else. I can find them on the platform. And I think of it, I have my own little sorcerers, like going around to thrift stores, finding the super cool stuff, and then I can buy it and kind of pay them a premium. I like that. I think it's a great site for collectors. But that being said, a lot of our collectors have slowed down a little bit from buying because their costs have gone up. My personal costs have gone up tremendously. Groceries. I mean, we're all feeling the pinch. So I'm going to jump into the comments. Um, and... With that, I'm just going to say things have are going great with me. Um, I try to work out two hours a day, whether that be a two hour hike or lifting or running or whatever the case may be. Uh, it makes me feel a lot better. I've taken the time that I was using to do these videos and I've just been exercising. Um, I have been able to get a good line of supply. Although even that, I mean, it's very touch and go because like I had a supplier that was supplying me a certain antique in bulk batches and then they figured out my store and everything else and now they want more money for it so stuff like that happens too I bought a huge estate filled with antiques I'm almost through that now I, I totally eliminated 2,000 items from my store uh, I discounted by 50 percent 9,000 items which moved a lot of stuff that kind of stuff's been going on. I redid my inventory, so it's been crazy. And I'm working on my taxes, which are due, uh, which I'm close to the end of um, by April 30th, I believe they're due. Uh, and I know that I'm going to get audited. That's another thing. If you're a business, not the type of people that's like, I don't want a 1099. I don't care. I don't like, but if you're a business and you're a successful business, you're going to get audited at some point. At some point, they're going to get you or they're going to audit you. Oh, can I just put this one more piece of advice out there for anyone who's been through the ringer will understand what I'm saying. And those who haven't gone through the ringer, it's probably coming because that's real life. Just take it day by day. 
Uh, I had many, especially towards the end of last year, I had many days where I had to take it day by day, where I was like, today is horrible. It's really bad, but tomorrow's going to be better. And if it isn't, just make it through the day. Um, that's it. Robert DeVoe says, hello, hello, Robert. Primo Kimo says, aloha, and so does Brigitte Spambanchi. Thank you very much. Patricia says, hello, hello, Patricia. Uh, hey, Josh, welcome back. Hope life is good. Thank you, Migo. Things are good. Josh, the motorcycle dork, says, hey, buddy. How's it going, motorcycle dork? Awnings, Houston, nice to see you, sir. Thank you, Awnings, I appreciate you. Adventures in reselling, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Uh, you light up our lives. Thank you, Primo, I appreciate it. Uh, Buen Look says, nice to see you again. You are the best. Thank you, Buen Look. I appreciate it. Bean, Bean, Bean. Welcome back. Good to see you. Says Curious Collection. Good to see you too. I'm watching your videos. I don't always comment Curious Collection, but I would say you are another pair, you and your wife, where it's, it's honest. You're like, I'm down. I'm having a hard time finding things. And I think anyone who wants that kind of real life, and sometimes you're like, we sold this thing that was great. Or, hey, we got this return and this thing was like $400 return. It was like a punch in the face. That is the real business. Anybody new watching? That's the exact real business. That's what we all deal with every single day. But the not real is when people come on and say, I sold this for $400. Bang, buy these. And if you don't know about these, Pay me and I'll show you about it. There's nothing wrong with people doing that. It's part of the business. That's their own business. This is America. You can start your business. That's what the American dream is built upon. Do it. Those people are not bad. But it's not real life. Real life is I sold this and it, I got a return. And if people aren't telling you about that, then it's the, the whole story is not coming out, in my opinion. I make enemies on here. Why? Why not? It's all good. <laughs> Rhiannon says, hi, Josh. I've missed you. Hello, Rhiannon. Good to see you again. Uh, Craig, the land shark picker says, who is the bean counter this morning? It's you, Craig. It's all you. Um, when look says, what are you talking about is like music to my ears, the whole truth. It's difficult. It's difficult. And there are every business is. And that's why the uh, failure rate is so high. But it's like starting a landscaping company in your neighborhood where there's already five. Like, what's your edge? That's what reselling is right now. What's your edge? Because maybe your neighborhood doesn't need more than five landscaping companies. What's the edge? That's hard. And I went all over the place until I finally found my niche. Um... And even that niche, you know, it's still difficult. It's still difficult. Weird things happen. I have items that I sell 15 a week and all of a sudden it stops dead in its tracks and it won't sell anymore. Why? Is it visibility on the platform? Maybe. Did somebody on social media share this thing and it got popular for a short period of time and then it's not popular anymore? Was there some sort of Netflix or Amazon Prime movie that came out where they showcased this? And then it, like, who knows why? I don't know why, but it comes and it goes and it makes it hard. Or you have something that sells very well and you buy a ton of it and you get Vero'd. And now you're stuck with it. This is real life. Um, T Butler says, happy to see you. Hope you are well. Thank you. I am well. Well, I'm well. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Darth Rifter says, hey, Josh. Uh, my life is complete again. Thank you, Darth. I appreciate all the kind words that you've said about me. I genuinely do. Um, it was uh, for a period of time there when I left. And I, I have to admit, I wasn't completely forthright. with the, I kind of just had to make the decision that it's time to go. And I'm like, I can't keep up with all these commitments. And maybe I wasn't clear about why everything was happening. For example, I needed a dental plan. Um through the employer, I can get on their plan and then carry the plan myself. I needed a letter of employment. These were two major, major things that had to happen. Uh, it was grinding me down, not being able to get those things taken care of. Um, it might be different 
here in the US, but in Canada, those things are extremely, were extremely important. And now I can carry those things. Um, I've also, I also needed time to clear out all the storage lockers. I don't have any storage lockers anymore. I have no, nothing on rent other than this place. I started clearing this place out. It's too much of a job. So I think I'm stuck with it. So I'm going to have to find a workaround for that. And with, you know, taxes and everything else, it was crazy. It was just too much. My commitments were far exceeding what I could handle. So I had to make quick cuts. Um, and I could feel my health was not going in the direction that I wanted it to, was another thing. Um, I was just working all the time. You know, I was running back and forth across the border like crazy, trying to meet make commitments and be with podcasts and trying to get shit. It was just too out of control. I had kids in tow, kids in the side room, they're fighting this and that. I'm like, this is not fair to anyone. This is not okay. We got to make some changes. So, and the one o'clock time doesn't really work for me because it's in the middle of the day where I need to source sometimes. Um, but we'll see anyway. I don't know. I can't make any promises. Robin Shada says you are back. Good to see you, Robin. Um, Landshark Picker says, I have gotten hung up on how people are saying you calculate sell-through rate lately. Here's what I'll have to say about sell-through rate. Here's my opinion on sell-through rate. Um, yes, sell-through rate is great for selling items. You want to check the sell-through rate. Uh, but sell-through rate items, high sell-through rate items in a thrift store, if that's where most people are looking, are like the diamonds in the rough. A sea of garbage with some diamonds. Um, and to scale a business, you need to have, you don't need to have lots of diamonds. You don't want to have lots of garbage, but maybe you focus on like the copper standard, uh, copper sells every single day. I make pretty good money at it. It meets my metrics, but instead of look, if I see the diamonds, I'll get them. I'll avoid the garbage. I'll just try and get the copper and bring that stuff in you're kind of middle of the road. It's much easier to scale that business than to scale a business where everybody is looking for the best of the best. I got that comment a lot from people. Your business would be so much better, Josh, if you sold Nintendo games or Nintendo 64 games or Super Nintendo games sealed. If you sold Super Nintendo games sealed, you wouldn't even have to do these videos. You'd be in great position. Okay. Where are they? <laughs> I look every single day. I don't find them. If that, if I could find a lot of that stuff, then I would be the Super Nintendo guy, but it's not how it is. Uh, Josh, how's the actual job going? Hopefully not too bad. I actually don't mind working full-time and doing eBay part-time. I love the everyday human interaction. Yeah, I haven't... I left after three weeks. I did one week of training, two weeks on site. Um, I said, look, it's not for me. I've got to move on. And that was that. Um, so... Devon says, hello, Josh. Hello, Devon. Good to see you. Um, Robin Shada says, do you do calculated shipping or flat rate? I do calculated shipping for everything that's over a pound. Anything under a pound, I do flat rate uh, $7.99. That number works best for me. Uh, sometimes I'm paying 12, sometimes I'm paying six, but actually works out that I'm losing money on shipping overall, but it's pennies yeah primo chemo says ebay is still the one yeah um i think others are are reaching for market share from ebay i think they're seeing the problems that people are having uh but they're also going through their own issues and problems so look consumers squeezed um anybody who says they aren't the consumer's not squeezed, doesn't know what they're talking about. Boom, I said it. I said it, and I will deal with the consequences of saying that. Credit card debt, highest it's ever been. Savings, lowest it's ever been. Inflation, we're coming off of it now. But it's done its damage. Interest rates, never raise them quicker. Those four things have crushed our consumer. People who say, well, I drove by the Applebee's and it was busy. That's anecdotal. But data-driven, consumer squeezed. So if you're doing well right now, you will do well when the consumer is no longer squeezed, which is coming. 
that kind of macro thing, there's nothing you can really do about. A little bit you can, but you know, you can cater to an older crowd that might not be affected because they have savings. They don't carry a mortgage anymore. They don't buy as much food. You can cater to that crowd, but the consumer's been in a vice for the last couple of years. And I think we're just starting to come away from that. The lower rates and things will get better again. Uh, <clears throat> eBay rules says Devon. It does. I, I mean, I, we wouldn't sell on eBay if we didn't love it. I have nothing against anybody that works at eBay. I understand how difficult the problem is that they're solving, but I didn't at first. But when you start really deep diving into everything that is going on, for example, reverse image search of items, they had to do it. So now you have to rebuild your entire catalog with reverse image search. <clears throat> um, the counterfeiting in the Vero's. Very frustrating from our, our end. But this is coming from the government largely and brands leaning on eBay, suing eBay, leaning on them to make these things happen. Um, taxes, changing, changing, changing. Tax laws, um, government regulations, import-export regulations, um, regulations changing when it comes to uh, eBay being a financial institution because they process their own payments, all these things. AI. You know, if you're not leading, you're falling behind. So they, they've had their hands full. I get it. Dave Jacob says, hey, good to see you back. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate you. Uh, Darth says, please monetize your videos. Block any haters that come through. Yeah, I put up, I made a mistake, Darth. I was playing with my old videos and I accidentally sent them all public. And there are some personal videos that I didn't want to share and I started getting messages on them. So uh, if you go through some of my old videos, if you go through some of my old videos, you'll see, uh, you might see some stuff that I don't want you to see. <laughs> um, I went to list on Mercari and got irritated and stopped, said Darth Rifter. Yeah, I, I haven't done it yet. Um, I think for me, where I would like to go, if anywhere, is... Um, I'd like to go into Shopify. Hey. If you guys want a cat update, this cat is still going. Um, I have spent a disgusting amount of money to vet, to taking this thing to the vet back and forth and everything else. Uh, checking for blockages and all this other stuff. <sighs> Put it on medicine. It's doing better. It eats very little though, uh, but it doesn't throw up and it's bathroom stuff is better. So for those of you who are interested in that, that's the case. And I feel uh, exercising a lot. I feel better. I'm starting to feel stronger again. Um, I feel, I feel good. And it makes it so that um, I can get through my days a little bit better. I've prioritized sleep and I don't work now past eight o'clock. I used to work till one o'clock in the morning. Eight o'clock is a hard stop. I don't care. It's done at eight. Um, I can't bounce back like I used to and I don't want to be miserable and I want to exercise and I don't want to be too tired not to. Devon just got back from a trail walk and the dog ate a mouse and threw it up in my car. <laughs> Brutal. But I loved uh, trail walks. I love. I did a big long one with the kids over Easter weekend, uh, thirty-two kilometers. I don't know what that works out to in miles, um, but it was a huge section of the Bruce Trail in Burlington. It was amazing. And from those of you in the Southern Ontario region, it was from Waterdown up to Crawford Lake in Burlington. It was just beautiful. The kids did a great job. Um. Yeah, Devon says there are brutal people on YouTube. There are. There are mostly good people. I will say that the people who were loudest and most critical um, were selling 
much, much less, or doing much, much less, or barely anything at all, uh, when compared to what was happening with me. But as a human, you take it in. You know, when people you don't even know are constantly, like, I had people sending me private videos 20 minutes long, uh, and I was stupid enough to watch them. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like, man, it gets in. And when you let it get in, they double down. So, um, Primo Chemo, the J-Lo effect. Wealth is not just money, but your health. Yeah, 100%. We full-timers can care for ourselves just like J-Lo. I have benefited a lot from focusing on health in the last year while eBay changes. Totally. Totally. And, you know, when you're... I, I, I had planned on doing that. I was, this is my mindset. I was like, okay, if you're going to build a business that requires a ton of sacrifice, which this business does, do it for three years. This might be because of my age, your kind of last chance to really grind like that. And it took its toll. It, it really did take its toll. When you're working 16, 17 hours a day, which I was, um, which is all part of the process. If you're starting this business, you got to kind of understand you're not really going to make much money in the first three years because you have to build it. You have to reinvest in new inventory and not all that inventory will sell. And as you scale, you know, build processes, all that costs money. But when you're not sleeping and you're working all the time and you're so deeply involved in this business it takes over everything you eat worse because you feel bad because you're not sleeping and you get into that spin cycle of for me anyway i was kind of gaining weight i was losing muscle i wasn't getting enough sun all this other stuff. i started feeling terrible and i was like just push it till um for three years and my, my health suffered and within a few months of getting back to my old routine of running working out and eating healthy and all the other stuff getting a proper amount of sleep bang i feel fine everything's okay um so and the business has not really suffered i would say that my sales right now are in in and around down four percent from last year i had another 80 percent drop yesterday i have not had a, really any sales today either I'm not letting it get in my head that this is going to be like it was last April because it certainly feels like it. <laughs> I'm thinking it's just a, a universe's April Fool's joke. I'm not going to let it in, but yesterday I was down 80%, 72.8% exactly. Today, down another 80%, and this is this year versus last year. Please don't do this again to me. Um, but we'll just keep going forward. Linda Boca says, happy you're back. Yes, eBay is the best. It is the best. It is the best. And a lot of the people that are coming on board now, they've let some go. I like those people and the people they're bringing in, I like. Um, I think, really, I genuinely mean this. eBay is one of those rare opportunities where it's a, it's a low cost entry and you can build something. It's not easy, but you can build a business. It just might take some time. It's not going to happen quickly. I mean, even if you start, let's say you're brand new and you start today and you build a business and by the end of the year, you make $25,000 gross. Take away the money part. How much did I net? How much this? How much that? Take that all away. You created $25,000 of value you did it yourself out of nothing. You know, who are you that you created $25,000 worth of value? Maybe next year you make 35 and then 55. And then your focus switches to not how much money am I going to make, but the focus switches to what does my customer want? What do I love? How can I share that passion with someone else? And it's kind of where I went to. Uh, 
Darth Rifter. Hit the like button, says Linda. Thank you. Devon, Josh always speaks the truth. eBay is not easy all the time. It can be very, 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 very difficult. WTF, hi, Chad. Grusadich. Josh, thank you, WTF. Good to see you too. Greetings your way as well. Steven, SNS, Bargain Barn. We need more real talk like this instead of the other reseller channels that put the blinders on. You know, the, the, those channels definitely do a service. This cat is 100% better. It's jumping around. This thing is... You! Stop. The answer is no. There, there's a side room here. Um, that's like my mini office. And it's in there and it's trying to jump around. It's like a whole new cat. Um, there is value to that because when, when you first start... We, we forget about it, but when you first start reselling... There's a, there's a ton of unknowns. Like we, we don't realize that now because we've been doing it for so long. But there's a lot of stuff like how do I ship? How do I print labels? How do I, um, how do I, you know, find customers? How do I find things that sell? You have all these questions. How do I use the platform? How do I tell this? How do I tell that? All these things going on. And I think those channels that are selling courses, uh, they might be providing a really good service and they shouldn't be Doing that for free, excuse me, necessarily. You, out. The answer is no, so you can come out. For someone who's sick, you seem to have a lot of energy. This thing, this thing. Um, so they might be providing a good service and um, eBay is not always the greatest at communication, although that's changing. But the dark side to that, in my opinion, is sometimes you hear, you know, I can provide a customer service thing. I can help you with this. I can help you with that. The, eBay is not sanctioning any of that. So they have to be careful, too, that, look, we saw it with Amazon. Amazon started suing people selling courses. This you have to be careful of with eBay as well in my opinion, because unless you're saying I am not affiliated with eBay, eBay does not condone what I'm saying. This is only my opinion. You have to be very, very careful um, because if you're giving bad information, eBay might say that's enough. And we know that eBay is very slow to act. So caution when selling rainbows on the internet. Uh, Landshark Picker says you cannot have a 100% sell-through rate. Mathematically impossible. I agree. I agree. Um, I think that the math they're using is that there are four listed. Eight have sold in the last 90 days. 200% sell-through rate. You can't have more than 100% of anything. Mathematically, that does not. that's impossible. Um, you can have returns and gains... It just means that 100% of the time that you buy it, it sells. And the time period in which that sells may vary. Um, so I would say, Craig, I agree with you. But certainly, I think for them getting their point across, it's it's warranted what they're saying because they're just saying 800% sell through rate. Basically, buy this thing, it sells immediately. But the it's the verbiage that's a little bit... Lenny Lim says, miss you, Josh. Thank you, Lenny. I appreciate you. Primo, you may have to fight for the time slot celebrity death match. He can have the time slot. I promised him that. Um, and I am not on solid enough ground to even know where I'm going right now with this. Uh, I just felt really, really kind of charged today to do this. Uh, it's raining, you know, all the things. I didn't really sell many things. So I don't have a lot of packing to do. I've got a little bit of time. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to come on here and just talk and tell you how I feel. Uh, Devon said, I had a feeling yesterday that you are back, that you are back. Your feeling was good. This is unintentional, but thank you. Um, Darth Richter says, here is a weird stat. The number one search result on YouTube has brought people to my channel is Josh Cult. No lie. That's pretty cool. Um, any, any haters will get the wrench says Devon. Thank you. Storage kitty is still around. 
Shopify is a great platform. You just have to drive the traffic to your site can get expensive. I would say without giving uh, away too much info, there are certain items that I have a, a large enough catalog that I would like to ink frog it over to Shopify if possible, and then just take advantage of Google ads to move that stuff. Um, and kind of build a little bit of marketing into that and just see how it goes. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. The goal was to get this business cash flowing enough that it could take care of me, my family, the business, and you know, just basically take care of everything. Uh, it's, it's touch and go. Uh, last year I would say was, well, last year was a break even year. Um, it's break even because I reinvest so much money into inventory. That was the goal for the past three years. I have not purchased as much inventory this year. Um, but my sales are more or less the same as what they were last year. The caution for me is that any money that is taken as profit, especially with this as a sole proprietorship is going to get taxed. And I would much rather much, much rather reinvest that money into the business to grow the business than pay taxes to the government. That's not, that's, that's the incentive of running your own business. There will come a time where you make so much money. And if you're incorporated in Canada or the United States that you can just pay tons of taxes and all your employees pay taxes, but the incentive for you to build your business and grow it is that the tax burden is lowered if you reinvest in your own business. Um, trail walking helps with uh, stress 100%. Yeah, 100%. Wayne says, Josh is back. Tactical Z says, hello. Dixon's Pickin says, hi, Josh. I went back to watch what I missed. Now I'm commenting. Welcome back. Thank you. I don't know if I'm back. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, honestly, Marcus, I don't, uh, I don't super enjoy a lot of parts of YouTube. I, I have a hard time. Uh, and this is just honest. I have a hard time receiving so much criticism and a lot of time, like a lot of people are like, wow, well, so what? Forget them. But it distresses me. Even if I push it off to the side, it gets in where I'm like, why, why did that person why would they do a 20 minute video of how much they don't like me? I, I don't even know this person and it loops in there and I'll shut it off and I'll lay in bed and then my eyes will pop open after an hour. It deeply, um, I mean, people say, oh, you have a thin skin. Maybe it is a thin skin. I'm not angry. I don't have an ego to protect, but it bothers me. It bothers me to the same degree as if I were walking down the street and a stranger stopped me and spent 20 minutes telling me everything that was wrong with my life. And I would think, why, why did you do that? So it's like that. And then you would carry that a little bit. And I've always kind of struggled with that. I don't want to get them back. I don't want to say bad things about them. I don't want to try and protect some, some like image that I have for myself, but it gets in a little bit. That's the thing I don't like about YouTube. Um, Mike Seller. Hey, Josh, it's nice to see you. Thank you, Mike. Andy Someda, back to the trenches, I see. Good to see you, Andy. I saw that you were on um, Roman's channel the other um, the other day. Love it, love it, love it. India Bode says, uh, thank you do much for coming back, or thank you so much for coming back. Thank you, India. I appreciate you. Um, Devon, Google Ads, how does that work? Okay, so Devon is asking about Shopify and Google Ads. So I'm learning about it, Devon, to be honest with you. But there is a tried and tested model. Um, there is a tried and tested model where if you have a product that's in demand, you can build a Shopify store, put it on Shopify, and drive your own traffic. And the way you do that is through either Google Ads or Facebook ads, ads X ads, um, etc. And there is a very clear correlation for items that are in demand between your ad spend and your return on ad spend. Um, so you can very quickly grow your business into seven figures. 
but you have to have a you have to have a product that's in demand and you have to be willing to spend a lot of money on ad spend so that's that's where that is now google ads and i talked about this with corey from um mom and pops uh, vintage i think the channel's called ebay doesn't allow you to do that ebay wants to handle it all in-house so what you do is you hand it off to ebay and you say okay here here's my external ads here's how much i'm willing to pay and then it disappears into the ether and then whatever happens happens but with Shopify and Google ads and Facebook ads, you can direct ads at a certain time of day to a certain group, to certain Facebook groups, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So if you're selling antiques, you want to get into the antique groups. I don't know if when I hand it off to eBay where it goes. And this is hyperbole, so you know that what I'm about to say here, but if I am paying for ads and I give it to eBay, and they give it to Google and it goes to the I hate antiques group and I'm selling antiques on there. It doesn't make any sense, right? So you want a little bit more control. So that's where that is. Nobody gives me the peeping eyes. Good to see you. I hope that answers the question. So, but the key is having in demand items. So the one I heard was um, iPods. Somebody in China was manufacturing a cheaper iPod. So when uh, the iPhone got rid of the, or Apple got rid of the jack, um, the iPods were super expensive. So they found a manufacturer that made them for cheaper, created a, um, a Shopify account and marketed it for half the price of the iPods. I, earpods, sorry. I don't know what I'm, you know, whatever it is called. Um, AirPods, thank you. And they sold millions and millions and millions. They did 20 million in a year of sales. Um, and the more that they were selling, the more they increased their ad spend. <clears throat> Major Wynn says, what is this for real? April Fool's was yesterday. Am I watching Josh right now? I am back. I don't know for how long. Um, uh, ads is fine. Retarget and stocking is better for looky lose. Fair enough, Andy. Uh, Major Wynn. Devon. Devon says, I hate when other creators use other creators for content and trash them. I, I guess we're fair game as we put ourselves out there. So if you're, if you become a, if you want to be out there on the internet and like publicly do your thing or whatever, they're going to come and get you. It's, that's how it is. I have a hard time admittedly, just like it does, it doesn't bounce off me. It, it gets in. That is something that I have to work on and just be like, okay, block, I don't care. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know why that is. It just, I don't know. Uh, nobody says we live in that kind of world. There will be, uh, yeah, people who want to move up while bringing in others down. I will tell you this. It never works. It never works. And it's, it's one of the reasons I don't, do it. And it's, first of all, I respect anyone who's trying to build a business, whether it's a YouTube business or they're selling courses or they're just sharing their journey or whatever the case may be. Even if I come on here and say that person is not showing the entire truth of what it's like, I respect them for everything they're doing because this is hard. It's difficult. YouTube's difficult too. All of it is hard. So um, I give them my full respect. The easy thing to do is kick up drama and, you know, pick people apart and all this other stuff. The problem with that is uh, you build more and more and more enemies and you're fighting everybody at some point. That's not, I want to build partnerships. I want to run into people and be like, hey, you know, shake hands, blah, 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 blah. I don't know how I didn't, I don't know how I came off as so controversial in many respects but i guess i did i don't know how i did it but i did so it is what it is but i have no there's no shade for anyone there is no shade for anyone uh i think everyone is doing their best to try and feed their families for the most part a couple people i won't go there uh 
Fair enough, Andy. Dixon Pickens. I get it, bro. YouTube sucks with people's opinions. Marcus brings us up too. Marcus uh, Dixon, check out Dixon uh, P Dixon's Pickens channel. You just, you know, you get people and they just they'll they'll say trash you. So when Marcus does a video and he's like, "Man, I don't care what you guys say," you know, I'm I'm doing this for me and I'm I'm I have my own goals and my own purpose. Most people watching the video aren't don't know what he's talking about because they don't feel that way. They're like, I think you're great. I love your videos. But those insidious, incessant people, it picks away a little bit. You start questioning. I think. For me, anyway. Um, Major Wynn says, never push others down to build yourself up. Always turns out gross. You'll get yourself in a world of trouble. You'll just make so many enemies and there will be so many people that say, I'm never going to work with that person. Or, you know, you can destroy your reputation just like that. Everybody knows that. It takes years to build a reputation and seconds to destroy it. And that's true. Um, so, what can I say? Um, now is the time to turn on Super Chats. Not feeling that yet. I, you know, Major when I made a mistake. I, I put out, if you go through my video history, <clears throat> you're going to find stuff probably from 2009. Videos I did, you'll see how much younger I looked. Um, drone 256 is two hour hike, six miles with hopefully a thousand feet of incline. Don't you feel so much better drone? It feels so good. I, it's just, for me, it's got to be a priority. So if I don't list 50 and I only do 40 because it's eight o'clock and it's bedtime and I decided to do uh, a two hour trail run or a two hour trail hike. And I don't run super fast. Um, that it is what it is. That's a priority for me because I don't want to check out of this place early. I've got a lot. I still want to do. I want to be there for my kids. I want to, I want to travel the world. I've always loved travel. I want to, all these things. So <sighs> it's been a hard, hard couple of years for the business, for the business. Um, Sandy says, good to hear your uplifting voice. Missed you. Thank you, Sandy. I appreciate you. Uh, Henri Squaw says, howdy, Josh here late. Well, welcome. I didn't know I was going to do this. I didn't give any heads, heads up. So this is like throwing a dinner party, uh, but you got to walk by my house in order to be invited. So Major Wynn says, ships sink, not from the water around them, but from the water that gets in them. That's a really good quote. James, my great reseller life. Who's the new face? Maybe I should change my channel name to the greater reseller life. And then we could start a little, I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> Dixon says yes for me too, Josh. Uh, yeah, hundred percent. It gets in you, right? It gets in you. And, um, you know, I am with this business to a certain degree, ride or die. I've always said that. So I think a lot of people are disappointed when they said, oh, you went back to work. You went back to work. You said you were going to do this no matter what. But it was essentially for a health plan that I needed to carry myself. And I need, I needed a vehicle. And I need to lease a vehicle because I need to write it off through this business. And I can't lease a vehicle without a letter of employment. This is, unless you're a corporation and you're paying yourself and you have like three years of history, but I'm a sole proprietorship. This was the difficulty. As soon as I had the letter of employment, bang, no problem. Yeah, you've got everything we need. Perfect. Good to go. Uh, you are welcome to not turn on Super Chats. However, it does help uh, the, the troll allo. You know, for me, it's just a, a complication. I want to make this as simple as possible. I want to come on here and just talk to my friends. Talk to the people that are doing this, you know, and just that's it. That's what I like. That's the part I like. Uh, Beth says, yay, Josh, what a pleasant surprise. Good to see you, Beth. Carla Olson, good to see you. Glad the cat is also doing well. Uh, this cat is, uh, Carla is like a super trooper. Um, I had to, I've taken it to the vet a ton of times now. Um, and they've, they've done blood work and they've done scans and this and that. And, uh, you know, and I was to the point where I'm like, okay, it's time. 
you know, it's, it's not eating, it's having troubles with the bathroom, it's throwing up, it's, it's just time. And, you know, they try different medicines and everything else. And all of a sudden, like now, it's jumping, it's jumping up on my desk over there, it's running around, and you're like, what is going on? It's eating, its bathroom is fine, it hasn't thrown up in a week, and you're like, man, this thing, they say cats have nine lives, they do, they do. Uh, yeah, James says, uh, I, I don't know if I said this already, Carla Olson says, good to see you, Josh, glad the cat is doing well, yeah, I did read that uh james says do it we can make fake beefs to grow our channels yeah uh you know i see you get a lot of trolls too and i'll, I'll say this about james I mean, first of all i've never had anything most people i've never had any problems with never had a problem with james james and i will email back and forth we've been talking for well over a year i think right james close to that um james James is as much hate as he gets. And people say, you can read his comments. All your stuff is garbage. He's kind of just stuck to the same model. Um, the people that are most critical of James, I would be surprised if they even did 120th of the volume that he does. He's still selling $250,000 worth of stuff a year. Most of it's paid off. Whether, you know, whether you like his model or not, that's a fact. Whether I'll, and this is not me throwing shade. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to show people the value, James. So I apologize if this is not coming off the way I intend it to, but believe me, it's coming from a good place. People will say, I would never work that hard for that return. But you got to work hard anyway. Choose your hard. Doing nothing makes your life financially hard. Choose your hard. You know, uh, not working out and looking after yourself is hard. But working out and looking after yourself is hard too. Choose your hard. So it's hard no matter what. You got to work no matter what. Uh, I was working 16 hours a day. I wasn't listing the same stuff as James, but I was listing both hard. Choose which one. I don't believe in the one hour model anymore. I don't believe the people that are saying they only do it one or two hours a day and they make $200,000 a year. I don't believe it. I don't think that's the case. Even if you're only listing an hour a day, you're sourcing the rest of the time. You're doing something. It's just not how, it's just not, I mean, you can do it part-time, but full-time, I mean. Jennifer Hoffman says, Josh, hello, hello, good to see you. Major Wynn says, respect, and I understand that. Uh, reseller Robo Beth says, I'm actually at a job now. I've demoted myself to two days per week. That's okay. You know, Beth, that might be part of it. I believe it's part of it. I had to go back. I, I needed a dental plan. I had to. Uh, I, I have two kids. i got to get braces. Um, and plus my own dental. It just made sense. And I caught a lot of heat from that. I caught a lot of heat going back. It's just for a short period of time, but it's still, it's just something I had to do. Whether, you know, some stranger from Cleveland likes it or not. Or Salt Lake City or wherever. It doesn't matter. It's what you got to do. And I say, Beth, my hat is off to you and respect to anybody who's making a go of this. You ever see that meme where it shows business is not growing. Your business is not a straight line like this. It's up and down and up and down and up and down, but you get to the spot I feel that Robert 292 says, welcome to the interwebs. Thank you, Robert. Should probably get off of here soon. I don't even know how long I've been streaming for. This thing has changed a little bit. Um, Marcus says it bothers me because all I'm trying to do is provide value and people want to come and bash you. These people, Marcus, here's, here's the truth. The people that are bashing for the most part, either they're not achieving what they want in their own life and they're projecting it, is my opinion. Or, I don't know, maybe they wake and bake in the morning. They play uh, Call of Duty all day. And then they jump on here feeling miserable and horrible about themselves and they just throw some shade your way. 
And they think it's funny when they get a reaction. That's what I think 90% of it is. They are not happy themselves. What do they say? Hurt people hurt people. When they are hurt, they're going to hurt others. And it's up, you know, it's up to us not to let it in, but I get it, man. It's hard not to because we're humans. And if you don't let it in and it doesn't bother you, you might be a sociopath. You might be sociopathic. Uh, Jennifer Hoffman says, Josh, good to see you, Jennifer. Yard sales steals 300. Happy to see you again. Thank you. You guys are throwing out some great love and I appreciate you all. Thank you. Uh, yard sale steals 300 says, good to see you again. Thank you, Kate. Hey, Josh and Chad. Good to see you. Hello, Kate. Backyard mowing says slow bay up and down. I had four days. I couldn't list four days and I got to thank, um, Ina Steiner and, um, uh, Liz Morton. Thank you for covering that. Uh, a lot of people were having troubles listing. I couldn't list for four days. There was an international server that was down. And if you were on that server, you weren't listing. That was me. Couldn't list. It's back. It's running again. Um, but, you know, I think these things are happening as they kind of overhaul everything. Rainan says, we'll never understand trolls. Life is too good, busy, and short to put energy into being a butt face for, uh, to someone for no reason. And it's true. Life is Life is great. Life is great. And this is one of the reasons why I like walking on the trails because, uh, you know, you'll see something like a fox running by or a coyote, skinny, skinny, skinny. I'm like, that's a hard life. There are a lot of creature comforts and there are a lot of things we do to ourselves to make our lives mo more difficult. But um, life is life is great, even with its ups and downs. I want to be here as long as possible. I want to experience as much as possible. 100%. And I, I have not, I don't, you know, none of that includes making people feel bad about themselves for doing their best. I'm not talking about myself, but other people I see on here struggling or, you know, someone I like, I like seeing small channels come on here and people talking, you know, they come out there and they're just their real selves. I, I like to show up and, and see people do that because they're doing it. So, <clears throat> Twenty minute praise video to counteract the twenty minute of hate videos. Um, Backyard Moin says that model is only for the ones willing to work ten to fourteen hour days on the bays. Yeah, I think so. I'll say this: Backyard Moin, when you find your niche and you're able, I don't know how long this is going to go on for everyone, and I apologize. When you find your niche um, and you build your processes around that niche or one of your niches it becomes not as hard. So there are niches that I'm in an hour to list 50 items, honestly. And that's from start to finish. Half an hour doing the drafts, half an hour uh, sending them live and taking pictures. That does not mean that's the end of my day. Not by a long shot. I, I'm sourcing, I'm shipping, I'm packing, I'm you know, lining things up, which takes a long time making sure that you know, the things that are coming in are grouped the same and that kind of stuff. So um, for me, the 10 to 14 hour days when I was first building this business are the long, long, long days. And I still have some long days uh, where I would sell in one day, a lamp, a track tape, a VHS tape, uh, a t-shirt, a vintage hat, a hockey stick, a golf club. Like it was so mixed up. And it was so jumpy all over the place where now I have to reset up my whole photo thing for the hockey stick. And now I got to make it smaller again for the hockey puck. And it, when I was working like that, I was like, how is it possible that people are listing 100 or 150 a day? It's because they're doing the same thing over and over and over again. You don't even think about it. Like now for me, 50 a day is not hard. I'm not stressed. I'm not even worried about it. It just, you know, it is what it is. It goes quick. 50 a day when I first started, I was unimaginable. I spent 12 hours easy listing 30 items. Easily. Everything was done on my phone. It would just take forever. It would take forever. Research every single item. I didn't even know, you know, what is this thing? What is this? 
uh, oh no, it's not fabric softener. It's, uh, oh, it's air freshener. You know, every, it's just so much work, you know, weigh it. How much does it weigh? Do I even have a box for it? Um, nobody YouTubers would do good if they just be themselves instead of copying bigger YouTubers video topics. Agreed. But there's money involved. Uh, nobody. That's part of it. There is money involved. So, and you know, if, if I did a video right now and I was like, my boring reseller life is a fraud or something like that. It would, I would like triple my views, which means I triple my income. So, and there's, I guess, you know, that it's all part of a business model, but as sellers leave the platform and as things kind of change and, you know, it's, we're in a bit of a crunch right now, uh, the more crazy and dramatic you make things, the more people will come and it's, there's money involved. So, um, coming, me coming on here and just being like, Hey, here's, here's what I think. And here are the truths. And you know, this kind of stuff bothers me. And that doesn't, it doesn't pick up as much, but it, I think it picks up a better group of people. Does that make sense? Resell a robot. Josh, I meant to motor myself to at my job to two days per week doing the eBay. The rest of the time I get profit sharing and insurance. Just can't give that up hundred percent. It's another thing. Health insurance, right? Health insurance. Um, and the bumps along the way, just the bumps along the way. Rian, in fact, Josh, it is never about who they are attacking. It's an issue. 100% always. It's an inner issue. Yeah, totally is. And, uh, Rian, and this is going to be an overshare, but it's something that, um, throughout my entire life, uh, that's been an issue with, um, everybody has this in their past, but like, uh, you have toxic people in your life. I had a lot of that. I had a lot of that. And I think it changes who you are. If you have a lot of toxic people in your life, you learn to walk on eggshells and really perceive when someone's about to blow up or, you know what I mean? So I don't know if this makes sense, but it's now built in my personality to be like, you know, really, you know, is this person about to blow up? What's going on? And I have to get over that. That's hard for me to do. Can be. Darth Thrifter, I play Call of Duty. <laughs> You're the one who's leaving the messages. Uh, Josh has been Mrs. Devon. Uh, I'm going to skip a few here. Bargain Effect, hello and good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, Rhiannon, uh, exactly, Major Win. eBay so much more rewarding and productive to be supportive and kind or just say nothing at all because this is hard. This is hard. And I think if you've been doing this long enough, you've gone through some pretty tough times with this business. Ups and downs. And you've had your days where you're like, I just got to get through the day or through the month. And it could be any reason. It could be any reason. You know, you're sick. Parents are sick. Kids are sick. Um, there's trouble with whatever, or something goes wrong or your basement floods. Like who knows? And, or expenses just pile up, but that's the real, real life. And the way this business is structured, all of our businesses is for you to grow, you have to keep reinvesting in inventory that sells, ideally, right? Um, so you're constantly reinvesting and sometimes it doesn't leave you the safety net that maybe a job would where, hey, insurance doesn't cover this car accident, that's no big deal. I have a safety net. Harder when you're building a small business. Uh... Okay, and I think we're pretty much down. Okay, everyone, I hope you enjoyed it today. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I don't know. When am I going to do this again? We'll see. But I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm doing well. Um, the business is doing well. Is it growing? No. It's down 5% from last year. I thought my numbers would start improving April 1st and beyond, but I'm having two very slow days. So uh, I've been fairly consistent since January of listing approximately 50 items a day. Um, I'm happy with the items I list. I'm happy with my niche. My, my items, I have a lot of contact with library of Congress archives and museums and galleries and researchers and, uh, you know, historical kind of types. I really enjoy speaking with them over the platform, even if they don't buy anything, 
they can often provide a lot of color on some of the items that I'm, I'm selling. So I really, really enjoy that. Uh, I like my niche and I'm going to continue with it. And as opposed to last year, when I have two days with no sales or very few sales, I'm just not going to worry about it. And we're just going to keep moving on. And um, we'll take it from there. So everyone, thank you for joining me today. Good luck on sales and have a great afternoon.